as you can tell from the title of this video, I'm going to ask a question. Not a confusing question, a simple question. And no Muslim on the planet, not the least, not the greatest, will be able to answer it. In fact, I'm so confident that no Muslim will be able to answer my easy, straightforward question that I hereby vow that I will record myself bowing down and reciting the Shahada if a single Muslim can answer it. Once our Muslim friends realize why they can't answer my simple question, they're on their way out of Islam. If you've had a discussion with a Muslim, you've probably heard the Muslim ask, where did Jesus say, I am God, worship me, in those words? Muslims were trained by Zakir Naik and Ahmed Didat to ask this question. More recently, Zakir Naik and co. have been training Muslims to say, show me one unequivocal statement where Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, says, I am God or worship me. Show me one unequivocal statement where Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, says, I am God or worship me. Notice, Zakir Naik and co. demand that the statement be unequivocal, meaning unambiguous, not open to interpretation, leaving no room for doubt. They demand an unequivocal statement because they know that no matter what Jesus said, they can always reinterpret it. In the Quran, Allah calls himself the first and the last. In the New Testament, Jesus calls himself the first and the last. In the Quran, Allah says that he's the one who will judge the world. In the New Testament, Jesus says that he's the one who will judge the world. In the Quran, Allah says that he's the one who will raise the dead at the resurrection. In the New Testament, Jesus says that he's the one who will raise the dead at the resurrection. Over and over again, Jesus makes claims that even according to the Quran, only God can truly make. What do Muslims conclude from all of this? They conclude that Jesus was only claiming to be a prophet. The central and sole miracle of Islam is the miracle of reinterpretation. But Muslims don't just reinterpret the words of Jesus, they reinterpret the words of their own God and their own prophet. What does Allah mean when he orders his followers to fight those who do not believe in Allah? He clearly means that Muslims are only allowed to fight in self-defense. Miracle of reinterpretation. What does Allah mean when he says that Muslim men can beat their wives into submission? He clearly means that Muslim men are only allowed to tap their wives gently with a toothbrush. Miracle of reinterpretation. What does Muhammad mean when he says, if anyone leaves his Islamic religion, kill him? He clearly means that if anyone wants to leave Islam, he's free to go. Miracle of reinterpretation. And we see this method on full display when we go deeper into a specific topic. Take the Quran's interesting claims about the gospel. What does Allah mean in Surah 3, verses 3 to 4, when he says that he revealed the gospel as a guidance for mankind? Well, Allah means that even though he revealed the gospel, it was corrupted by the Apostle Paul and by Christians at the Council of Nicaea, and it ended up not guiding mankind. Then what does Allah mean when he says in Surah 7, verse 157, that Christians still had the gospel in the seventh century, long after the Apostle Paul and the Council of Nicaea? Oh, he only means that some truths still remained in the corrupt gospel. Then what does Allah mean in Surah 18, verse 27, and Surah 6, verse 115, that no one can change his words? That just means that no one can change Allah's plans. But the context of both verses is that you should read the book that he has revealed because no one can change his words. Well, then he clearly means that no one can change his words in the Quran, even though they can change his words in other books. Then why didn't he say that? Why did he say that no one can change his words when he really meant that people can change his words in other books, but not in the Quran? Oh, you know, we have to interpret these things. Miracle of reinterpretation. So why does Allah command Christians in Surah 5, verse 47 of the Quran to judge by the gospel? And why does he tell Christians that if they don't judge by the gospel, they're in rebellion against him? 
Oh, that's easy. When Allah commands Christians to judge by the gospel, he means that Christians should read the Quran, then go to the gospel and find the parts that agree with the Quran, and then judge by those, but throw the rest out. Aha! Uh -huh. Why does Allah say in Surah 5, verse 68 of the Quran, that Christians have no ground to stand upon unless they stand upon the Torah, the Gospel, and all the revelation that has come to them? Yeah, well, Allah obviously means that the Quran is the only preserved revelation and that the Gospel has been corrupted. Miracle of reinterpretation! That's how conversations go when we ask Muslims what the Quran says about the Gospel. They reinterpret everything Allah says so that they can bring it in line with what they've been told by their leaders. Muslim leaders have Allah on a leash, like a dog with a muzzle, and Allah is only allowed to speak when they say speak. But recall the Muslim methodology. When we claim that the Bible teaches something, they demand an unequivocal statement. The statement must be unequivocal, unambiguous, not open to interpretation, leaving no room for doubt. Why? Because Muslim leaders are professional reinterpreters. They do it with the words of their own God, their own book, their own prophet. Why wouldn't they do the same with our God, our book, our Lord? But now that Muslims have presented their standard, an unequivocal statement, it would be a shame if we didn't apply the same standard to them. It would be a shame if we didn't demand consistency. So, let's demand consistency. Let's demand unequivocal statements. We'll start with an easy one. Muslims, where does Allah declare unequivocally in the Quran that the text of the Gospel has been corrupted? Give us one unequivocal statement from Allah in the Quran saying that the text of the Injil, the Gospel, has been corrupted. Just one. If you can give us one unequivocal statement from Allah in the Quran saying that the text of the Gospel has been corrupted, again, I will record myself bowing down and reciting the Shahada. Now, I know that you Muslims who watch my videos don't read your own sources, let alone our sources. So all you're about to do is Google, where does the Quran say that the gospel has been corrupted? And you're going to get some verses. But before you post those verses in the comments section, try reading them. Ask yourselves, where does this verse say it's referring to the gospel? Where does this verse say it's about the corruption of the text, not about people misinterpreting the text or misrepresenting the text? Once you've put together your best and clearest verses, share them in the comments section and see what people have to say about them. This Friday, I'll go live on my channel with Sam Shamoon, and you can give us the best of the best live. We'll discuss the verses one by one, and if you're able to give us a single unequivocal statement where Allah in the Quran says that the text of the Gospel has been corrupted, I will conclude the live stream by bowing down and reciting the Shahada. Doesn't get more exciting than that. See you all Friday.